Okay, guys, hey, it's Corey Ackley again with Hammersfield Performance. I'm sitting here at a hotel uh, uh, in Maryland uh, doing some work for the government, and then in the evenings I try to maintain a little bit of, little bit of connection to the victory world. Um, so anyways, new video. The video that we're uh, going to do here is sort of to highlight shift points, wide open throttle shift points. We often uh, spend a lot of money to on our bikes to, to make them fast, and, and so we ought to be uh, making the best we can out of shifting them. So before we get into the uh, the details, one thing that I recently did uh, while I was back home in Texas was update my inertia uh, and recalibrate the inertia on my uh, dyno. So um, it's, it's showing slightly more conservative numbers, probably what's it closer in line with the, the, the new software from uh, DinoJet. Um, one of the nice things is I can actually go back to older uh, dyno runs and... Uh, apply that new inertia calibration in there and it actually lowers those so uh, uh, you know what you're going to see here on the next uh, couple uh, di uh dino graphs i'm going to use as demonstration tools those numbers may be a little bit slightly less than what you see on facebook on my page but that's due to the new calibrations so all right with that said we'll uh we'll get in here in just one minute uh, stand by okay so as we talked about before we're talking about shift points so one of the nice tools that a, a dyno graph or having our bike dyno tuned will do is it will, it will show us where our peak power is and then that will also help us determine uh, where we should be shifting our bikes because a lot of times you'll hear, uh, I've heard personally on uh, different forms, whether it's a victory form or whatever the case may be, you hear t different people talking about you know, where you should shift a bike at. And so what we're going to do here over the next few minutes is go over a few dyno graphs, we'll do some comparisons on the power curves, the average power, and peak powers, and where we should be looking to uh, shift our bikes. Okay, the first bike we're gonna go over would be, a, this is a brand new 2017 Victory Magnum. This is not the actual bike. This is a picture of another bike we did in the dyno, but as you'll see, this is um, a bone stock Magnum that had a, uh, Oh, I want to say it was a demo bike, and so I think the bike had around uh, uh, 800, 900 miles on it. Okay, on this graph here, as we're looking at it, you can see this is a, a bone stock uh, 2017 uh, Victory Magnum, and it makes peak horsepower about 4,600 RPMs. But if you look here in the right-hand uh, corner, um, the it catches data every 250 RPM, so the resolution is not as as good as what you would see on the actual dyno graphics itself. So with that being said, what we see here is a bike that makes peak power around 45, 4,600 RPMs. I think many of us have uh, heard on the internet or of various forums that, hey, yeah, there's no reason to rev a, uh, a brand new cross country or a Magnum beyond 4,500 RPM because it's all done making power. So with that said, what, um, what we got to think about is average horsepower in gear change. So, for example, my shift from, not my, but a shift from first to second might yield a 12 to 1500 drop in RPM. So, that 1500 drop in RPM is what we need to think about when we look at our shift points. So, under this, uh, under the concept that, hey, you want to shift at your peak horsepower, that would mean we shift about 4500 RPMs and then the bike going from first to second would drop down to uh, 3,000 RPMs-ish. And if we did that math right there, the average horsepower between 3,000 RPMs and 4,500 RPMs is 65.4, okay? Okay, so now what we've done is we went ahead and say, let's say we raised our shift point to 5,250 RPMs, still making peak power at um, between 45 and 4,600 RPMs. So if we take the average power from 5,200 and the 1,500 RPM drop between gear changes from first to second, then uh, the engine will drop down about 3,750 and start its climb back up and through second gear. What we notice there is we have an average horsepower of 72.7 horsepower. So what we know is that if we extend the RPM range beyond the peak power, and when the RPMs drop back down and start working its way up, we have more power going past peak horsepower and shifting than we do shifting at peak power, average about six horsepower. 
Six horsepower is a lot of power that you're not putting to the ground if you're short shifting at your peak RPM. So just something to think about. And again, just to reiterate, what we're really talking about is this is wide open throttle. Part throttle is, is another animal and that there's a whole lot of other factors, but right, we're, right now we're really just talking about wide open throttle uh, shift points. So again, the other thing too to take in consideration is that between every gear change, you're going to have a different drop in RPM because your gear ratios get closer as you get higher in gear. So you may have a 1500 RPM drop between first and second, between second and third, you may only have uh, an 800 RPM drop. And then between uh, third and fourth, you may only have a 600 RPM drop. So each shift point, each RPM sort of manages your shift point or where you should shift at past peak power. Now, if you have a motorcycle and the bike makes peak power at the rev limiter, then you don't have any other option. You got to shift to peak power. Um, likewise, if you have where your graph drastically falls off beyond peak power, then once again, you want average, you know, use, your, uh, use the data that you have, find where your best average um, horsepower is within the RPM drop and then adjust your shift point left or right to have the maximum average horsepower applied to the rear wheel, which will make you faster. Um, there's calculations out there that saying um, by that five or 10 horsepower increase by shifting um, and having more meat in your mid-range is could be one or two bike lengths uh, out on the street per gear change. So that's not a hard data number, that's just a, a conceptual, but anyways, that's what we want to have you think about uh, when, we, when we try to fine tune our data points. This is the gasser. This is my little throwback rendition uh, to the gasser, you know, cars back in the, uh, the 50s and 60s. So it's just my little, um, I guess, tribute to it. With that said, this is my low budget bike. It's been on uh, Facebook quite a bit. This uh, bike started out as a 2003 Victory V92 that my son owned. He got in a, uh, a couple motorcycle accidents with it and went to Harley. So I bought off him for 1200 bucks and then, you know, continued to eBay it to death uh, with stuff I could get off eBay for real cheap. So this build, this is a 100 uh, inch big bore that I got the jugs off eBay but I put late model pistons, so I put pistons out of a 106, uh, a late model Victory engine. It gives a little bit more compression. I cleaned the bowls on the heads, and it's got a set of Zumi exhaust, 495 cams, and a Power Commander 5 on it. I also had the computer sent off, had the rev limiter extended to 7,500 RPMs. You'll ask why, and I'll talk about that later. And uh, had uh, some degree, the timing moved around a little bit. So this is the build of the gasser. So with that being said, here's the graph. So if you look at it, I, have, I take this thing all the way up to 7,500 RPMs, and there, there's a reason why I do that, okay? If you look at that graph, you'll see that it has a fairly steep climb that comes to peak, and then it slopes over on the backside as it drops down to 7,500 RPMs, which again, I don't always sh shift beyond 7,000, but Sometimes I do, and we'll explain why in just one moment. What we have here is two overlays or examples of the dyno data from when I tuned or I had the gas on the dyno. On the left-hand side, what we see here is an example where I shift the bike at 7,000 RPMs from first to second, as an example, and the, the RPMs drop to 5,500 on that shift. The average horsepower between 7,000 RPMs and 5,500 RPMs is about 114 horsepower. My average horsepower, as that bike goes into second gear and starts climbing back up into uh, the upper RPM ranges. So, on the right-hand side is an example of shifting at peak horsepower. In this case, 6,000 RPMs. So in this example, I shift at 6,000 RPMs. The RPMs drop as it goes in second gear to 4,500 RPMs, and then the bike has to re-accelerate back to 6,000 RPMs. 
In that window, the bike only averages 100, and, we'll call it 107 horsepower. So what we have here is another six horsepower difference if we shift beyond um, our peak, peak power. And again, this varies by our peak, correction, this varies by obviously, you know, where your bike makes power, but also it varies by the drop that you'll see uh, in RPM between gears. So that makes a little bit of sense. So sort of, to sort of recap all this, is that there is you will be faster generally speaking and this is not my concept this is i'm just showing you the data that proves it you know their drag races figured this stuff out years ago but generally speaking is you know for those of you that have have uh, had your bikes tuned it's worth the time and effort um to take that down a graph and sort of break down where the media power is and if you want to be fast on the street or you want to be fast at the track, then, you know, find the best average horsepower per RPM drop per gear and apply that to when you're at wide open throttle and you're uh, sporting your buddy around or if you're at the, or if you're at the, the, uh, the drag strip. And again, just to talk about one more time. It may be that in with the gas as an example, maybe I shift at 7,000 RPMs from first to second, maybe going from second to third, I shift at 6,500 RPMs, um, from third to fourth, I shift at 6,500 RPMs again, and then from uh, fourth to fifth, which is incredible speeds, maybe I shift at 6,000. But those are just examples where it can vary by RPM based off the RPM drop that you have. Um, going back through here, there's probably a couple times that I've, I, I misspoke or, or I, I didn't speak clearly on something. I do apologize that I'll take a, another look and recap at this. Um, but anyways, with that being said, I, I really appreciate your time and, uh, thank you. Hey, Corey here. So just going to review the video and yes, I've said probably three or four things that were misspokes. Uh, I, I misspoke about something. Um, people don't often question where you shift your brand new victory at, they often will comment on where you should shift a stock cross country. One of my mistakes. Another of my mistakes, if you're, if you're uh, running your buddy around, um, what I meant was if you are racing your buddy um, on the back there. So there'll be a couple of things. And, and the last thing I want to close up with is hopefully um, I don't insult anyone's intelligence. That is not the intent of this. M many people know this um, already, and it's been around for a long time. It's not anything that I developed. But on the flip side, having been a guy that has maybe been on a closed circuit that simulates looking like a real street and have been in uh, several uh, of those uh, little skirmishes on those closed circuit uh, streets in Mexico, maybe, that... Many people don't. And so um, there was a bunch of posts on the VOG that I, I read over the years, you know, where, you know, someone looks at Dynagraph and says, well, yeah, your bike makes peak power at 5,500. There's no need to rev to 5,600 because your bike makes peak power there. And so what we're saying is do the math, do the average. And if you're going to spend, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars to make your bike fast, then why not do everything you can to make it perform to its maximum potential. And hopefully today we had a little bit of fun and, and that, that, that's what you got out of it. Um, if I didn't, that's okay too. But hey, let me know if you have any uh, issues or if there's something else we can do. And I'm going to continue to make these. I'm enjoying them. Um, but if there's something that I'm missing, then let me know. Thank you. Bye.